Okay. So the question is, um, what would Hildegard be saying to the Pope today? Well, I think it'd be very parallel to what she said to Popes in the 12th century. And um, she said they were surrounded by evil men who uh, cackle like hens at night, scaring even themselves. She talked about the Curia. Curia today is filled with, with evil, uh, cackling hens who scare even themselves. Um, ignorant men who are power hungry, who have created a new inquisition, who have centralized the church, even though the Second Vatican Council made every effort to decentralize it, they've recentralized it and appropriated all the power for themselves, whether it's power over the liturgy or um, power about doctrine and teaching, as if, as if they are theologians themselves. They aren't. They're administrative hacks, but they, the Inquisition is back in the Curia, and um, they're condemning theologians right, left, and center. So um, she was blunt with her language then. And then, of course, there's a whole pedophile cover-up, which is traceable now to the Vatican itself, clearly, and um, certainly to the last pope. Benedict XVI, but the previous pope ignored it entirely. And um, so she has this amazing line where she says uh, uh, that the, there's no one around to um, hold the clergy responsible for the corruption that's going on, but she says, I will. So I think that that's something she would um, tell the pope that it's time to clean house. And um, in addition, I think she would appropriately criticize him for his bad ecclesiology. And, uh, and again, by the Pope, currently I mean John Paul II and Benedict XVI, because the new Pope is too young to um, see exactly where he stands. One can hope he's better, but indications are that in fact he's He's uh, beholden to communion and liberation, which is another neo-fascist group like Opus Dei, that the last two popes have totally pushed out front to run things in the church. But uh, the previous popes clearly turned their back on Vatican Council that defined church as a people. And they've redefined it again as hierarchy. And I think she would be furious about this. She never defines the church as hierarchy, never defines the leader of the church as the Pope. She defines the leader of the church as the Logos, the Word of God, uh, the cosmic Christ, therefore, cosmic wisdom. And I think she would also say, she just said that, you see, that the, the role of clergy is to serve, not to, not to lord over others. So I'm sure she would say that to the present Pope, too. And I think she would be thoroughly involved in the the women's movement today. She was in her day, and there wasn't a movement as such. Uh, but she was very involved with the return of the Divine Feminines, present in all of her paintings and her writings. And I think she would be extremely public and vocal about uh, the return of the Divine Feminine, the need for it to balance the masculine. And I think also she would push for a, the sacred masculine, for the, for the healthy masculinity returning, and not the pseudo-masculinity that we've had in our culture for so long. <clears throat> I also think because she cherished science, she says all science comes from God, that she would be on the side of the homosexual uh, revolution today, because science has spoken. Science tells us 8 to 10 percent of any given population is going to be gay, Furthermore, they've counted 464 other species with gay populations. Therefore, gay is not unnatural, as the previous popes have said. It's natural to a minority. And what's unnatural is to force gays into uh, heterosexual marriages. It's never, it doesn't work for anybody. So um, I think that particular social movement of our time would be something she would take a stand on. So. Um, I think she'd have a lot to say to a pope. <laughs>
and she does today, for sure. And the return of the Divine Feminine, the finding that balance again, has to be present not just in our heads, but in our practices, in the issue of ordaining women, for example, and um, uh, in our commitment to creativity and education as, as part of the bringing forth of wisdom. And for her, she says, all, all creativity contains wisdom. So uh, moving from knowledge to wisdom for, would be of great interest to her. It would be a passion for her because she was not just interested in the, in the intellect. But she says Christ is rationality. She's overcoming the anti-intellectualism of centuries of monastic practice. But um, at the same time, she's not throwing either the right brain of intuition out in mysticism or the left brain of analysis. She would seek a balance. So she would be very involved in today's science, and she would be absolutely out of her mind with um, ecstasy over the new cosmology and how it ushers in a new era of awe and reverence, therefore, and respect for for the universe and for all the other beings with which we share this amazing universe. <clears throat>